Hey, I'm Rachel and welcome back to Oxheart Gardening. Today is our week 19 garden tour. We're coming up on 20 weeks and this is the point in the season where we start thinking about the fall garden. Now, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Rachel and I'm gardening here in South Carolina, zone 7B. I've got this raised bed and one other raised bed and then I have my backyard full of containers. I actually live in an apartment I'm renting and I feel very lucky to have found uh, all of this space back behind my fence to garden. So without further ado, let's go take a look at the garden. Alright, so here is the first section of the bed here. Can't call it the carrot bed anymore because as you can see, the deer have just come back time after time and eaten off the rest of my carrots. I have like three or four left now. But as you can see, the bush beans that I planted are coming up and hopefully that means very quickly this bed will start to fill out with something harvestable. And this is Draco, the garden cat. So if we look to my left over here, there's this tomato that volunteered from last year that is finally actually got ripe fruit on it. And they're not bad looking. They look like full-size cherry tomatoes, which I'm pretty happy with. It's very cool. Now the second section of the bed is peppers and tomatoes and a few random things like basil. I've got this lettuce leaf basil here on the end that is just getting massive. Look at how big those leaves are. Something started chewing on it recently and that's, that's a new thing. It hasn't really had very many pests all year. And my tomatoes, oh my goodness I've been harvesting so many tomatoes. These are just gorgeous. You can see a lot of these are just about ready and more higher up that will be ready soon. Now mostly my tomato plants look really good. Occasionally I am seeing spots like this and that's totally normal with tomatoes. That's probably splashback from the soil after rain. Uh, some bacterias that live in the soil can get up onto your tomato leaves and then sometimes if you don't get them early, like when they're down here on the lower leaves, you can see on this plant it's actually spread a little higher up. You can prevent that by pruning off the bottom leaves of your tomatoes. As you can see I've done a lot of that already. I've got a lot of stem and then the leaves don't start till much higher up. So I'm going to go pick some tomatoes. A lot of the tomatoes I'm picking, I'm going to pick a little early because I'm about to be away from the garden for five days and I've got somebody watching it, but I just, I want to make sure that they don't have all of the work of protecting almost ripe fruit from potential pests or birds. So I'm just going to go ahead and get what I can, get what's ripe enough to continue ripening inside so that they don't have to deal with that. Check it out. While I'm here, I'm also gonna grab a couple of peppers, but I wanted to show you guys on the plants first. So let's go do that. So I've got my Zulu pepper plant right here. These peppers are supposed to be about the color of eggplant. So these are pretty much ready to pull. Bird left me a little gift on this one over here, but that'll be okay. We'll wash that right off. Now, the Zulu are actually my only peppers in this bed besides the Buena Mulata that are really producing. 
which means that they're the only sweet peppers that I have producing. I have some more down here. These next to it are the Buena Mulatas. These are actually spicy peppers, and I didn't know that when I put them in here. For some reason I had it in my head that they were sweet, but they are definitely spicy. Um, so in this bed, it was supposed to be sweet peppers and tomatoes, and the sweet peppers, they're just so far behind. And I think I said this previously, I think it's because I rushed putting them out, uh, the, putting them out at the same time as the tomatoes. So tomatoes can actually take a whole lot more cold than peppers. And the peppers, like, they didn't die, obviously, you can see them here, but I think that they were severely stunted by the fact that I just, I rushed them out and put them out too early. However, look at that. I think that's some setting fruit. That is Edgevarsky. So that is going to be kind of a longer sweet pepper, I think. I'm most excited for my Laysa peppers. Let's go look and see if any of those have set blossoms. I don't think I see any yet. That's one of the plants right there. Another plant, if you can look past that giant tomato in the back there, that's a Laysa. Laysas are going to be really beautiful because they're going to be like red bell peppers, but heart shaped, which I am super excited about because, you know, ox heart gardening and all. Oh, look at that beautiful purple basil. I have this giant tomato that I'm waiting, waiting for it to come ripe. This is going to be my first Hungarian heart tomato, I think. That is just a massive tomato. Look at that in my hand. That'll be a good, good sized tomato. So I got these three smallish bell peppers. Um, I kind of thought that they would be a little bigger uh, and some people online have said that they are a bit bigger than this, but you know, these are about the size of the purple pepper variety that I grew last year that I got from the store. And so, you know, I'm not, I'm not too disappointed. Here's the whole harvest this morning. Gorgeous. Let's just take a quick peek at the hill up here. Things are going pretty well up here, I'd say. I've got a bunch more marigolds blooming. A lot of them are really, really pretty. And I just harvested some beans from my bean plants. Got a few more that need to come. And my nasturtium has still only produced that one flower, but I am pretty sure the heat is getting to it. They're not really meant to grow through the middle of summer and that's okay. Oh wow, look at that one. Wow, such pretty marigolds. I've got another volunteer tomato right up in here. That looks like that setting fruit that'll be ready in a couple of weeks. And I've got like massive amounts of baby basil around. So maybe we'll be harvesting from that coming up here. Oh, there's a baby purple basil. Baby purple basil. And that one's sweet basil. I'm also loving all the clover that is just naturally here. It's so gorgeous. And a quick update for those who are following a little more closely. This is my Du de Spagna pepper. Um, it's the one that I topped pretty early on in the season. You can see that right here. And it refused to grow a new stem for a really long time and finally shot one out of the side. Normally when you top peppers they bush out and this one has just refused to do that. Shot out its, its single stem and it is finally putting on flowers. So we might get peppers out of this yet. You know, I, I thought it was going to die but here we are. It's severely stunted though so I would not recommend topping this giant bell pepper plant. So in terms of fall plans for this section of the garden, I'm thinking 
that I will probably start planting root vegetables in between the tomatoes and peppers. And, hello, Draco. <laughs> and uh, I'm probably, what I'm probably going to do is when these are spent, I'm going to just cut them at soil level and not worry about pulling out roots. It's kind of part of the no dig method is to uh, not disturb the soil as much as possible. So that's the plan currently. Uh, I did basically the backwards of that when the summer season started. I had root vegetables in and I planted around them. So right in these alleyways, I think I can go ahead and start some things in, in about a month. Not yet. We're still planning. But yeah, probably near the end of August is when a lot of this is going to go in. So let's check out the trellis here. It's still looking all right, but I'm thinking I might rip up what's here and replant some noodle beans. One, because I really like noodle beans and they'll probably have time. And two, because a lot of what's on the trellis right now is cave beans. And I am not a big fan of these beans. They're kind of stringy, good for shelling, but I don't have nearly enough to shell. I think I've grown a total of like 10 dried beans from this whole setup. So I think it would be worth my time to try replanting with something like a noodle bean that I actually really enjoy eating. This is the other raised bed that I have. I've got two spaghetti squash and one pumpkin, that's the smaller one back there, and a massive sage plant that, like, it just looks perfect no matter what I do. I've got flowers coming in on this spaghetti squash. So beautiful in the mornings. I haven't seen any female blossoms yet. Female blossoms are going to be the ones that have like what looks like a baby fruit attached to them. So far male blossoms, but usually the male blossoms come first, so I'm not too, too worried. So coming into the backyard jungle, let's take a look at the herbs. I seem to have almost killed my spearmint. It's looking very crispy probably because it's been so hot lately. Luckily, the oregano and the thyme and the parsley seem to have pulled through. I'm pretty happy about that. And the basil just <laughs> looks amazing as ever. I've got one of my tomato plants leaning over my ginger right now, reaching towards the other two. And I've got some fruit set on these. They haven't come ripe yet, but it looks like at least this one probably has stopped growing. It's been about that size for a while now. So I might get my first harvest from the backyard tomatoes pretty soon. You can see I haven't really pruned this one to a single stem. I'm just kind of letting it go wild right now because it's got a cage instead of a pole. So it's got a little bit of support for this branching. As far as the tomatillos go, they are still spreading out, not producing much fruit, um, and at this point I'm not sure if they'd be worth my time to do again next year. There's a couple more fruits set on these, but I think that would bring my total fruit up to five with these two giant plants. So, and, and I'm not even sure that I actually like tomatillos right now, so I'm not sure if I'll put my effort into really growing these moving forward, but we'll see. I've heard ground cherries, which are relative of tomatillos, are actually really, really good. So might might put time into one of those at some point. But for now, tomatillos not looking like a good producer, at least in containers. Could be the containers the problem. Who knows? Stevia though, look at that. If you've never seen a stevia plant, that's what that is. If you were to pick one of these leaves and eat it, it would taste like straight up sugar mixed with salad. Like if you if you put granular sugar on salad, that's how sweet it is. And it's also got that leafy aftertaste. 
I actually made an extract of this recently and it turned out really well. So it's looking like there's enough to harvest again for a second bottle of extract. These two pepper plants, if you've been following along, these are the two that I planted much later in the season. They lived in the greenhouse for like three or four weeks more than all my other peppers because I was trying to give them away initially. And you can see how much darker green they are than the other peppers. And even though they are, this one especially is eaten all to hell, um, it's still putting on so many blossoms and it's going to be loaded with peppers here soon. But take a look at that and then look at the color of most of these ones in the yard. They're quite a bit more yellow and less robust looking than those, even though both of those are also hot peppers. Of course, we have to stop in on the jigsaw pepper, a beautiful variegated darling with cute little purple fruits on it. I'm not actually sure what color these are supposed to ripen to, but I guess we will wait and see. I think this is mostly an ornamental variety, and uh, it sure is beautiful. Next to it, I've got my jalapenos. This is looking gorgeous. I've got some serrano peppers next to it coming in. Serranos really just look like skinny jalapenos, to be honest. <laughs> I think this is also a serrano plant here. Skinny jalapenos. I've also got some cayennes. I actually harvested two red cayennes the other day, and I've taken a couple of green cayennes to put in salsa. Oh, look at that. So this, oh, what are you called? Let me look at the tag real quick. This is going to be my first ripe Anaheim pepper. Just starting to get some color. This is supposed to be really good for um, roasting. So I can't wait to try that out. Kind of looks like my first sugar rush peach might be getting ready to harvest over here. You can see it's got just a little bit of that peachy color coming in. It's taking quite a while to ripen and I'm not sure if that's because it's not really getting much sun being at the bottom of the plant. I, I don't even know if these work like tomatoes to be honest because I know a lot of tomatoes um, some of their color comes from being in the sun. But look at that. These are supposed to be just a little bit sweet and also hot. That'll be exciting to try, especially for hot sauce. So back here I also have bush beans. Those two are dragon tongue. I had some black turtle beans in these two and then behind them are some other beans that I can always fail to pronounce, but they look like dragon tongue except they have pink streaks instead of purple. And I'm thinking if I'm going to rip up the beans on the trellis, I might as well pull these out and replant and see if I can't get another harvest from these. Although if you look very closely, you can see baby beans coming on there. So they are still producing technically. They just look incredibly sad from the summer heat. Beans are not really great in the middle of summer. Although, I just noticed this. Right up here is the dill that I let flower. Those seeds are looking like they might actually be ready to start saving. You can tell because they've kind of turned brown and crispy. All right, wrapping up, we've got to talk about this giant pumpkin plant. Look at, it comes from all the way over there by that trellis and it has just taken over as much space as I will let it here. Look at that. Keeps going. Keeps going. The tip is right there. I've actually uh, seen one probably pollinated blossom around here. Let's see. Oh, I can't find it now. Oh, here we go. So this one I, it's the second female blossom that I've seen, and so I made extra sure to hand pollinate it 
so that I can get at least one pumpkin out of this giant plant. This is actually, if you haven't been following me, this is a pumpkin that last year grew out of my compost pile and I wasn't quite sure if it was a pumpkin or not until it turned orange at the end. But when I cut into it, it was like the orangest pumpkin I've ever seen. It made pumpkin bread that looked so orange it looked like I had put food dye in it. So of course I saved the seeds and I'm trying again. They did not have a very good germination rate, however, I have this one massive plant. So I'm really, really holding my breath, hoping that I get another pumpkin from it this year. Further back here, I also had planted some cucumbers and it looks like they are losing their fight to the squash bugs, unfortunately. So what I may do is rip them out and actually just try again. Um, in South Carolina here, I do have a very long season. I have about a hundred days left before my first frost date, which is plenty to get a cucumber. So that's probably what I'll do. Probably just rip these out, squish as many squash bugs as I can find and uh, go from there because these plants are looking really, really sad. Kind of done. Alrighty, and that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for watching. That was Garden Tour 18, no, 19. I don't know, the title's got the right number in it, but thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next week. Until then, happy gardening.